Hey, what's up? Let's talk about uh, monitor calibration today. You know, monitor calibration is one of those things like watching HDTV for the first time that once you see it, I don't think you're going to ever want to see a display uncalibrated ever again. Uh, you know, these products range in price from $100 to tens of thousands of dollars uh, for the professional. I want to talk about the SpectraCal C3 today, which I have hooked up here to this display. Um, the SpectraCal C3 was given to me by SpectraCal and I want to thank them for that. Uh, as a valued customer, they sent me the latest version of their product uh, for no darn reason. Uh, just because I bought the last one that they made it, within 12 months, I guess. Uh, I've tried some other products on the market at as much as $300 and they've all honestly been garbage in comparison to this meter. Um, the meter actually comes with some software that has uh, some amazing features like a dummy mode called standard that you literally just put the hockey puck on the screen plug it in via USB and it does everything automatically in about three minutes um, I'm gonna go ahead and get one of those calibrations started uh, just to show you how easy it is uh, I obviously can't show you how great the results are because you know depending on your display and the camera you're just not gonna appreciate it but uh, all you gotta do is hit next and read and it's it's already doing its thing in a minute it's gonna ask me to go ahead and click it one more time to go ahead and start calibration um, you know why would you want to do this well the artists that develop con that develop content that draw imagery for computers television you know it doesn't matter content creation in general they work in these very specific workflows and environments where their displays are calibrated a certain way and uh, so what they're seeing on their displays uh, is all is all unified so what one person sees at one cubicle is the same thing that the next person sees and in essence you're trying to make your displays calibrated to look like theirs and obviously by doing so you get to see what the artist intended you know it has the added benefit of just looking lovely uh, you can snipe people in the shadows easier because the mac you've maximized the contrast on your display you if you have multiple displays like I do you can you know have a good color uh, balance between both of your screens you won't have one red and one yellow looking display um, if you love movies and games you know may it be on your television or your PC you can hook this thing up to any of those things and get the work done and it'll make everything look amazing um, like I said it's three to five minutes you know Best Buy charges three hundred dollars to come in and calibrate a TV that you buy from them you know the Geek Squad will just rip you off so for a fraction of that cost you can have the ability to calibrate all your displays in your house and even your friends and family so you know for that reason I'd say it's great but for the cost of three games you can have an unlimited usage, you know, and that in itself I think is a, an incredible value. Um, just talking about displays in general, you know, uh, breaking them up into pieces or into segments, I would say that IPS displays make a lot more sense for people who are in production or content creation. Um, and a lot of people try to say that IPS displays just don't make a lot of sense for gamers. I would say that that is depending on whether or not you're gaming online or locally. If you're gaming online, I'd say that the variance and network latency is such that whatever latency you may have on an IPS display is a complete wash. Uh, if you're playing locally only or if locally is your primary focus, then you're going to take a little bit of an image quality hit, uh, but a, a PVN or a TA or a, T, a PVA or a TN display makes a lot more sense because uh, the input lag and uh, refresh rates are a lot higher so you're gonna have much faster responses on those displays but you know like I said if online is your primary focus then don't sweat it uh, and, and enjoy the excellent image quality of, a, of an IPS you know for a professional I would like to point out that IPS is segmented into an economy version that has six bit color uh, and that has some sort of gradations uh, in between the colors and you'll have the same thing on the on the other cheaper displays but there is a high-end super IPS display that's a lot more expensive that you get true 8-bit color 
and you know those are really reserved for content creation and not really used for gaming but just to know you know if you have the budget there are some incredible displays out there that will give you pictures like you just can't believe once they're calibrated you know and and that's my quick and dirty on displays um, I believe this thing is just about finished here it's about to finish the last couple clicks but um, you know you need to try to consider you need to consider spending a little bit of money on making the stuff that you have a little bit better before you want to go out and necessarily get a new display I would say that you know cheap displays are only about hundred and fifty dollars but the display that you have if it's even five years old is probably good enough and uh, if you calibrate it you probably get a lot more mileage out of what you got so just something to consider uh, thanks for watching this video and keep visiting goki.com number one in the world